And I will just, I'll let Bruce lead off. Uh, he's, he wanted to get everybody together, as many people as wanted, that wanted to, just to kind of uh, give you all some insight on what's going on, some FYI 401 stuff. So Bruce, go ahead and lead us off. Sure, I just wanna make sure, can you guys hear me? Yeah. Okay, um, well, welcome. I'm Bruce Chafka, I'm the uh, activities coordinator here at NEO a and College, and I'm live from Van Hall, as you can see. And uh, we gave it the, the nickname, uh, the plaza. But uh, we tried to brainstorm and come up with something where we can maybe have an open forum with some questions. Um, I was going to uh, direct some questions at uh, Ryan and Amy as far as if they can clean some things up with uh, things that are happening here at NEO. Um, I think I'll just jump right in and, and talk. I know our school, I think it was two weeks ago, came up with uh, um, pass or no pass for our current online classes. And I was hoping maybe Ryan or Amy can chip in and sort of talk about the details of that. I know some students have already reached out to me and asked, well, how do I even do that? So maybe if you can touch, touch base with that. Okay. Um, now I'm not certain how many of you students actually received a notification about pass no pass policy. I see some hands up. Give me a thumbs up. Okay. I see some hands. Uh, give me a thumbs up. Good deal. Um, I'm getting some feedback as well. If you would go ahead and mute your your screen, um, I think that's probably where I'm getting the feedback. Um, so what that means is that if you are doing, let's say you have ABC in a class, and you're you're concerned about that grade down the road, what will happen is you will have till the end of the semester, um, after grades are turned in, April or May eighth. May 9th will actually kick in where you'll be able to see those grades and determine whether or not you need to uh, do request a P or NP pass or no pass for that class. And ABCD allows you to request a P and F would, would allow you to request an uh, NP, which is the no pass. That means that whatever, whatever happens there, a grade doesn't actually go in. It's more of a placeholder that shows either you passed the class or you didn't pass the class. Um, it doesn't go into your GPA. Now, if you pass it, that does allow you to move forward and continue on, say that it's comp one, it would allow you to go straight into comp two. Um, let's see, I am actually gonna share my screen. Let's see here. I've gotta admit some more people. Hold on, I'm going to share my screen with you guys, maybe. And I've got the document up here and it just explains the policy. You guys probably received this in your email. If you have not, I will tell you that you will be given a reminder um, on May 8th, which is the day that classes will be, or uh, the day that grades will be going in. And so on the 9th, when you look at your grades, you can determine that, what you'd like to do. This will also be posted to D2L. So this link right here, you would click on it and then you would actually fill out this form. Can you all see my screen? Not seeing your screen, Ryan. Okay. Let's start anew. Okay, so this, this was the policy that was developed um, and it, it gives the exact indication, you know, it says here May 8th, that's when assigned standard letter grades will go in. May 9th is when you guys will be able to see those grades and then determine whether or not you want to request a P or NP. Uh, it is recommended that you do talk with your instructors, your advisors, specifically if you're in a, a allied health program or you're going to a program at another institution, sometimes that P is not going to be the best benefit for you to take, especially if you've got an A or B. Now, a P generally would go in and be transferred in as a C, if I'm not mistaken, correct, Amy? If you'll un unmute. I hear you, Ryan. Did you, I said a uh, student that requests a P and they've got an A, B, C, D, I mean, whatever they do, when they transfer that credit, a lot of times it will go in more so as like a C grade, right? Right. If they need to evaluate on a grade basis, wherever you're transferring to or for whatever purpose, they would typically look at that as a C. Okay. All right. So here's just the policy. And actually, this link right here will be shared on D2L. That will be posted on D2L on Monday, May 4th. Um, again, a reminder will go out on May 8th. 
to notify you, hey, don't forget you have this option as far as a pass, no pass. Um, but Monday, May 4th, this will actually be posted to D2L where you can go in and request a change of grade from whatever the letter grade was, if it was ABCD to a P, or if it was an F to an NP. So given that the case, if you decide to take the NP, that means that you would have to retake that course. It, I mean, it's just not going in into your GPA at all. Okay. Questions, questions on that? If you have a question, you can go ahead and unmute yourself. So the pass, no pass is not required. It's not required. It's based upon really um, what, whatever you see fit or whatever you see is necessary. But again, you would want to make sure that you speak with, if you're in an allied health program or if you're in a program that requires that you to have a certain grade for that class. Um, for example, let's say that you have chemistry for health science. And for that class, I'm not that this is the case, but if you had to have a B or higher and you took the P and you already had a B in the class, it would be best for you because that P is really going to go in as like a C. And now it's not going to your GPA but it would be best for you to go ahead and take the grade for the course as opposed to taking the P. Okay, so my grades are good, just like with my classes. So like mm -hmm. I technically don't need to worry about the pass, no pass. Absolutely not. No, this right. is just an option, um, just based upon the fact that, you know, we're in this transition period, your first, I mean, coming back from spring break with this whole COVID outbreak, moving everything to online, there are students that have, uh, that's not the most conducive way to learn for them. So this is an option to help alleviate some of those, those struggles there. Okay. And I've got a message here. Um, when would you have to retake an NP course? Um, I mean, based, if, if you get an NP, I'm assuming you're going to want to take it the following semester. Again, if it's like a comp one that you decided to take an NP for because you were failing it at that time, then you're going to have to take comp one the following semester. Um, one of the things I wanted to note on this as well is that um, this is kind of retroactive as well. I've got notification here that uh, faculty will make the decision for each student who requests to be reinstated. Um, as far as, so if you had a class, talking about withdrawals now, so if you had a class that you withdrew from after the April 13th date, you can actually be retroactive and request to make a P or NP for that class. Yeah. Uh, now, that was anything, anything prior to April 13th, that's already taken care of. I mean, if you took a W, that's what will go in. However, anything after that, you should be able to uh, go back and work with the instructor, complete the form, and request a P or no P. Amy, am I? No, well, if you withdrew, you'll have to go back to your instructor now to be reinstated in the class so that you could do the P or the NP. There's a little bit of process beforehand. Um, okay. It won't be automatic um, that you can request that. So if you withdrew after, you know, before the um, withdrawal pending date and you didn't know about this, so now you want to be reinstated, you have to reach out to your instructor and if they respond, they will respond to you and to the registrar that you can be readmitted into that class, the registrar will put you back into that class, and then you would be eligible to do the P, the NP at the end. Okay, and I'm going to share that screen one more time. Let's make sure I get the right one here. Um, but again, this link right here will be posted to D2L on May 4th, and then we will send you a reminder out on May 8th. Um, and then at that point, you will, you'll just have to have completed this, that grade change form for each of the classes that you're requesting in P or in P4. Questions on that? And just to clarify, that's gonna come from Academic Affairs. So it won't come from Ryan or from me. Um, so be on the lookout for a reminder from um, Dr. Fonstock or, excuse me, Dr. Fonstock or Dustin Grover. I'm sorry, or Ruth Coyne, because I'm not sure if Ruth sends them out for them or not. Okay. Clear as mud, everyone. <laughs> we appreciate you guys being so flexible. Again, this being thrown into this has not been easy for anybody. 
Um, and I think as long as we're all trying to be as flexible as possible, um, we'll get through this and hopefully all of your instructors are being understanding and you are on the same page as well. So, all right. Okay, topic two, I believe open enrollment at NEO started last week. Um, what's the process? Say if I'm a freshman at NEO and all of a sudden, I think this is the first time we have done it, open enrollment, I believe, at NEO, but what's, how do I start the process? If I want to sign up for classes for, let's just start with maybe next uh, fall, because I'm going to talk about summer later, but what, uh, what can I start as or what can I do to get the ball rolling with open enrollment for next fall? Well, I would, I would first say that you could actually work through the summer and fall at the same time. Um, I know that you said you want to talk about that later, but I, you could do it all one lump, one lump sum as far as the time frame and requesting all that to be done at this point. I'm going to uh, yield to Amy to start this conversation, if you don't mind, and then I will pick up where she <laughs> Okay. Uh, as Bruce said, we did start open enrollment. Enrollment for current students has been going on for about three weeks. Um, if you haven't heard from your instructor, re or I'm sorry, your advisor, reach out to them um, or reach out to the advisement center so that we can start the process to get you enrolled for the fall semester. Um, at this point, we're planning to move forward um, just as normal. Um, you know, obviously it's still an ever-changing situation. So, um, you know, go ahead and get enrolled for those classes so that you can get your spot. And then um, if there's need for changes as we go, those will be, you know, communicated to students. But it's really important that you start now. We are enrolling students every day. Um, it's all being done virtually. Uh, so you'll be in contact with your advisor or with the advisement center um, via a Zoom meeting or telephone or email. Uh, to work out your schedule. So uh, be proactive, get out there, get your classes now so that you can um, have what you need when the fall comes around or summer, as we've said. Ryan, and did I ask, did I answer everything? Yes, and I would recommend if you have not received any information from your advisor, most of you probably have faculty advisors at this point, if you have not received anything from them about getting enrolled, reach out to them directly. And I also am gonna go ahead, if you can't get in contact with them, I'm going to share my screen again. And if you all have a pen and paper, um, if you wanna write this down, there's my information. Or screenshot or take a picture if you don't wanna write yeah. it down. And there's also uh, the admissions uh, registrar. She could, she could also get you started in the process. Um, but one of us would be more than happy to get you going. Um, if it's just to get the ball rolling and get you in contact with your advisor or for us to take care of it uh, in house here. So. So as far as summer goes, I thought about asking, is the summer school schedule, is it going to be the same as last year or are there, is there changes for the summer? Do you want me to take that one, Ryan? Please do. Okay, <laughs> right now um, all of our classes are posted um, on the schedule online so you can look and see. There were probably some class changes from last year. Um, at this point, we're still waiting um, a little bit to make the decision of whether those classes are going to be online or in person. Um, it really depends on um, how things go over the next few weeks. So just be on the lookout for your email. Um, if we do have to transition to an online format, we'll let you know as soon as possible so that you can make decisions that you need to. Uh, but hopefully some of you have been getting used to this and it, and it won't be too scary for you. So if we have to go that way, you'll continue to take those summer classes. Um, and again, this could be split. We may be, you know, it may be something that for the first four weeks of summer we're online and then we're able to move back to face to face for the July session. It's, an, it's a moving target at this point. Every day something different comes up and it makes us make new decisions. So just be, you know, get enrolled. If things have to change, you'll be communicated with. Keep checking your email so that you know what's going on and keep looking for these types of activities because we're going to continue to do these through the rest of the semester. One thing I'll add on to that, if you have not been enrolled as of yet, um, like I said, reach out to that advisor, the person that you've been working with. If you can't get in contact with them, I've still got this up, sharing it, my information, as well as uh, our registrar, Shea Clapp's information. Um, the key to getting the ball rolling really quickly would be for you to go ahead and have your banner pin ready. 
meaning that you go into gold keys, get your banner pin and have it ready to go for your advisor who at that point can just jump in, get you your classes, and then they can set up a meeting like this to go over your schedule, okay? Okay, so moving forward, one of the questions I thought I would ask was, uh, what if I have a bill on my account at NEO? How do I go about, I guess, navigating that or is there any stipulations because of the, the pandemic that we're going through? Is there anything that I should be aware of or if you guys can elaborate on that a little bit? Amy, do you want to or do you want me to? I don't. Um, as far as uh, students who are living on campus, um, we are making some adjustments to your bill because you had to move out before the end of the semester. Those should be, uh, you, be, you should be able to view those on your account by the end of April. So be on the lookout for those. If you had a zero balance and you get an adjustment, you can expect to get a check in the mail. And um, if you didn't have a zero balance, that amount will go back to um, cover part of your account or what's at, whatever's on there. If you have a remaining balance now and you want to get enrolled, you can contact the business office and pay 10% down on whatever you owe or get your bill below $200. Um, if it's above $200 and you pay that 10% down, you have to make a payment plan for the rest and that can all be done virtually at this point. Uh, to pay your bill, you go to the my.neo.edu and you click on the online billing form and you can pay it by uh, check, electronic check or uh, through a credit card or debit card. So you're able to do that online. Um, and then uh, there is a link that I believe has been sent out by the business office. If not, reach out to me and I will get you the link to set up your payment plans. Okay, okay. any questions on that? Does that include the meal plans? I'm not an, in, I don't stay on campus, I'm off campus. But for those of us who did meal plans and now we can <laughs> Did they decide they're going to refund that or are they going to transfer the meals to the following semester? We are working on um, actually refunding those amounts to students. So if you had a commuter plan, um, then those amounts that were left on your account are being refunded to you. Um, that Those should go out within the next couple of weeks also. Here, Amy, I was going to ask, in the uh, business office, when you're talking about getting, making a payment or whatnot, who is the individual that they need to speak with there at the business office? They can speak with Crystal Baker. Um, and I'm sorry, I can't think of the other lady's name. That's terrible. Angie Gleaves also available? Angie is also available. She's in the office every day, pretty much every day. Um, we are limited staff right now still. Um, but every office has at least one person in it um, every day. So you've got, um, even Mr. Bruce is now our mailman. So he's in the post office from 8.30 a.m. to 12.30. Uh, but we have someone in the business office every day. We've got uh, admissions registrar, CASA has somebody every day, housing has somebody every day. So even though we're few and far between and we're keeping our social distance to be good stewards, um, <laughs> we are, uh, we are here and we are trying to take care of business for you. So please, um, if you have questions or if you have needs, reach out to us. I'm going to share, I just added uh, Angie Gleaves information. I think she would be the best. Crystal, uh, Crystal's the other lady. Crystal, I, Crystal Baker, and I don't have her information in here. So, um, but here's an individual for sure. You have the contact information there if you'd like to screenshot that um, to reach out to them. Lindsay Evans is the other person in the business office. Okay. <laughs> Sorry. So moving forward, um, I, I got a couple different questions that I didn't know exactly what was up, but I, when I finished my master's degree, it wasn't officially done until I got the piece of paper in the mail. And the person wanted to know is if uh, diplomas will be mailed to each individual that graduates. That's probably standard procedure, isn't it? Yes, even though our graduation is 
not happening on May the 7th like we had planned and hoped to do, um, we will be mailing out diplomas um, as long as the degree requirements have been met. So that pass, no pass thing may come into play. Again, those classes, if you, if you have an A, B, C, or D and you choose a P instead, that will allow you to use that credit to graduate. So those classes will still count for graduation. Um, graduations will be posted as we normally do. It usually takes a couple of weeks after grades are put in for us to verify all of the requirements are met, are met for the final semester. Uh, then those are sent off for us to have printed and they are usually returned to a student by no later than the 1st of July. Um, that's kind of the turnaround process for the, for the diplomas in May. Sure. I'm, I'm gonna tag on to what Amy stated. Um, before you can graduate, though, you have to have your graduation paperwork completed. Uh, if you have not spoken with your advisor and you guys kind of got the ball rolling and maybe started the process and you filled out the application, that doesn't mean that everything has been done. You might, please follow up with your advisor to ensure that that paperwork has been submitted to uh, the registrar for your degree to be processed. Um, in fact, I have a pile of students here that I'm trying to reach out to that all I need is they're okay to move forward with a graduation paperwork. So make sure that you're following up if you are graduating or plan to graduate with your, your advisor. Or in worst case scenario, reach out to myself, I'm assuming Amy, um, and we could get you going as far as filling out that paperwork for you. Definitely. And if, um, Wyatt, you're going to be my example on this one. Hi, Wyatt. Um, <laughs> uh, Wyatt, um, we had, Wyatt wasn't receiving the emails. You should have already received an email if your paperwork has been submitted for graduation. Uh, you should have gotten something that told you that you were on track to graduate. So if you thought you completed the paperwork and you haven't heard from Shay Clapp, who is the registrar, then you probably are not on that list. You need to reach out to your advisor, as Ryan said, or you need to reach out to, uh, to Shay to see um, maybe if she can help you. Or Ryan or myself, we're all here to help. And again, if you didn't get that information earlier, there's my contact information and there's Ms. Shay Clapp, who is uh, the registrar. Those are people that you could reach out to. So, and mine's not on there, but you all know I'm the crazy lady that emails all the time. So I can add it, Amy. We can add it right now. <laughs> no, if it's okay. The the last item I had to talk about, I think it's a simple one, but someone had reached out to me and asked, "Hey, coach, how do I get my transcripts?" And we can go to the website, I believe, and, and order transcript. Right? Yeah. That's the normal procedure. So. Yes, there is a link on or you can go to our website, neo. Yeah, any excuse me, neo.edu, and you can type in transcript request and it'll uh, pull up a link so that you can go to that page. Uh, just read. Um, it, there are some some things that you have to read to make sure that you get to the right one. You can request a transcript electronically through a company called Parchment. Um, so if the school that you're transferring to or the place that you need the transcript sent will accept that electronically you can have that sent um, that way. It does cost you $5. That is not through the college. That is through the parchment system. Um, and so your payment goes directly to them and it gets, um, comes to us and gets sent automatically. Um, you can also request it free by filling out the form and sending that in. Um, if you can take a picture of it or scan it and send it to NEO admission at neo.edu, uh, those will get processed. You make, sh make sure that you mark whether or not you want it to wait for spring grades um, to be posted. Um, if it goes now, it'll be an in-progress transcript and that is not considered official. So you need to make sure if you need an official transcript that you mark that you want it to wait for grades are posted. And just to follow up on Amy's uh, statement there, I did pull up the homepage, neo.edu, if you all can see it, um, you would go up here and it says transcript request, you click on it. And once you clicked on it, of course, my, my first term enrollment was fall 1999 or after you click there. And then you've got two options here, which she had mentioned. You can either do a standard paper transcript or you can do the expedited, which is an e-script sent directly to the institution, which is the $5 cost there. Good info, good info. We also recorded this uh, Zoom conversation. We're gonna post it on all of our social media platforms. We're gonna email it to the student body. 
just to see if we can reach somebody that couldn't uh, be in the meeting today with, with the Zoom conference call, um, just to let you guys know that. If there's not any other questions or <coughs> Ryan or Amy, you don't have anything to add, um, that's going to conclude the Zoom conference call. I just want to remind everybody that uh, be on the lookout for these things. Uh, Bruce is working with Holly and Housing to set up some more. I think we have one planned tomorrow that is um, more along the lines of students who were in housing, uh, but you're welcome to join. So be on the lookout on our social media and in your emails for information. Also, we're going to set up uh, for next week, we're going to get on here and talk about your best Netflix selections. Um, that you could share with us during this pandemic when we have so much downtime, uh, the best best uh, movies or, or shows that you think you would like to recommend. So thanks for joining us today and good luck. Thank you, hope everyone's doing well. Bring your dog next time, we wanna see your puppies. <laughs> see you guys, thank you. Bye. Yeah.